As sports in England begins the social media blackout today and all over Europe when the FA made the announcement last week, I had the opportunity to speak with former England cricketers Philip De Freitas and Devon Malcolm to give their opinion on the ECB during this blackout. As a member of the West Indies communications team, the ECB is a great ally of the West Indies on and off the field. So it was a great conversation to hear from these black cricketers what their view on the situation was. So, yeah. so I'm not putting on a recorder. So I guess the, the first question is basically your reaction as a former England black player to the ECB joining with the football community with this social media blackout from three o'clock today. Yeah, I think I think it's it's a fantastic uh, thing they've done. Um, you know, it's about time. This is you know all you all you keep reading about is um, after certain football matches, um, certain footballers, you know, especially black um, uh, footballers, are getting racially abused. Nothing's being done about it, uh, and it happens in all you know in all sports. It's happening you know normal life, um, you know, and the, the thing that really sort of angered me a little bit really was to see that this new uh, Super League came out and how everyone was totally against it and everyone supported that and squashed it straight away and racism has been going on for so long and and it's you know and it's about time you know people react the way they have done to the Super League so um, the ECB coming on on board I think is a fantastic thing and it's about time yeah. And, and secondly from a cricket perspective, as you just said, the, the main focus is about this social media blackout came from the football community. So what more do you think after this blackout could the English cricket people do to follow up with this during this blackout? Well, I, I, personally, I mean, I, I know the ECB have been doing a lot. Um, you know, they've been trying to, you know, make sure everything's done in the right way. And I, you know, and I support them for that. And I think, you know, it's great that they, they're you know, doing that. Um, but the one thing, you know, like in years gone by, you know, it's talked about and then we have a certain gesture towards it and then it's just brushed under the carpet and then you go on again. So this is an op this year is an opportunity to actually make a stance and make sure these things never, ever happen again and they don't exist. Um, and it's and, I, and with ECB coming on board with the football, with the rugby and, and it shows you in sport you know, how each other, you know, everyone supports each other. So um, it's definitely, they have to carry on and stay strong and, you know, put a foot on it and make sure um, these things, you know, don't carry on. You just brought a question to my mind. It's going to be a little edgy, but I think, I think, I, I think I'll probably have to ask you this anyway. I guess going back in the days, you played in an era when I guess more England, black players played for England. So I'm just wondering, was there any instance back in your day that you remember in cricket that you're seeing it happening in football now that you, you wish that didn't happen back then? Oh, listen, I, <laughs> uh, how, many, how many times do I have to go through? I mean, how many incidents do, you know, do, do I, can I mention? Um, yeah. You know, one that of the much. things with uh, yeah, one of the things I spoke uh, about on Sky Sports um, when, we, when we spoke about it was receiving, you know, letters from the National Front saying they're going to kill me and kill my family. You know, if I stepped on the field to play for England, um, you know, and it's not just once that happened, you know, it happened, you know, five or six times. Uh, and, you know, the letters I received, um, you know, the messages, you know, you, you're going back back then, obviously, you didn't have the social media, um, you know, so that was their way of getting to you through, through sending letters. So it's no different to the players now getting it on social media. Uh, and it was worse because it was phys you're physically receiving these things, uh, and all you were told was don't read it, put it aside, and we'll, you know, we'll we'll, we'll sort it out. I mean, you know, one incident where I had to change my car completely, I had to block my letterbox. Um, police had to keep an eye on my house. Um, you know, those are the sort of things you, you know you you you're watching the movies or you read about. You know, happen many many years ago to you know to a family back then. But to actually happen, and then it's still going on, it's just, uh, you know, it needs to stop. You can't, because we're all human beings. You know, no matter what colour skin you are, we're all human beings, and you, you, know, you can't treat someone different because of the colour of their skin. Yeah. I guess on a, on a lighter note, um, obviously, modern times, Joffrey Archer 
Chris Jordan, to just similar to yourself, Devon Malcolm, Weston New Mortons, who played or played for England. I guess I don't want to ask you how proud of you to see them representing England, but as they move forward in this era as black players dealing with this situation, what would be your advice to them? I, I think it's, you know, they've got a wonderful, you know, opportunity, um, you know, to, 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 to help with this. Uh, it's great to see them. It's great to see them playing for, for England. And, I, you know, and they, they should be very proud of that. Uh, and they, they are. They are role models now. So it's an opportunity for them to, you know, say the right things, do the right things. And, you know, and, and we, we as ex-black players or, black, you know, English players, uh, we will support them. Um, you know, look, you know, back then, you know, when we played, you felt that if you, if you said the wrong things, then you wouldn't play again. So it's very hard for us to, to come out. And I think now they've got the support, they've got every, you know, people around them. I think they can actually express themselves and, you know, and if, if things happen, they, you know, they can express their views of, you know, of what's happened. So where back then we couldn't. So, but I, you know, I'm, I'm I'm so pleased and great to see them play, and uh, and we'll, we'll support them all the way. First question: Yeah, what's your reaction to the ECB's decision as a former England black player in joining the football community in the social media blackout today? Yes, I mean it's uh, it's great to see us as a sport trying to work collaboratively. You see, I mean it's not only a. Uh, 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 a football problem. I mean, I must tell you this, way back in the past, in the 80s and all that business, what you see on social media now, that's what you used to hear people shout in the stands. And the, the, the PFA have worked hard over the years to try and drive out this kind of abuse and racism out of football. So um, it's a great platform to be on. And, you know, as a sport, you must um, join in. And it's great to see the, the, the ECB come on board to say, yes, they'll be doing a blackout as well to support what the um, footballers or what the, uh, um, the PFA is doing. And not only that, um, I'm, I'm still a member of the uh, second part of the ECB, the Professional Cricket Association. That is all the first class uh, um, counties cricketers playing and past players. So we are part of that. And, you know, as I said, I've you know that I've been out of first class cricketer for quite a couple of decades or so now. But yes, I'm still a part of the uh, organization. And it's great to see the PCA come on board to protect their members in the current players and past players. They said, yes, we're a part of this. And we, 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 um, we're tired of this abuse. And don't get me wrong, you know, these social media sites, these social media, these big social media companies, they have done great for the game. But in the same sense, you know, they got to take responsibility to say, look, people can't use their platform to show abuse and racist language and all that business. They got to be accountable, uh, to be honest, and they've got the, uh, the know how how to do that. Fantastic. Well, I spoke to Phil DeFreitas earlier and you kind of leading me to my second question that he said, same thing you said back in the 80s. You guys experienced similar. He gave me an example of how he would get racist messages and, and, and um, telegrams and stuff. So I'm just, just so for, for background purposes, could you tell me a scenario in the 80s that you experienced that was in cricket that was that you still remember to this day? Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, uh, well, in cricket, I mean, I could uh, I could really tell you something mainly about football. I mean, way back in the day, it was a, a great football fan. I used to love watching football. And um, I remember watching one of my, you know, uh, uh, as we were born in Jamaica, my uh, from, from Sheffield, one of my teams in England then was uh, uh, Sheffield Wednesday. And I actually went for the first time way back in the early 80s, Oldham was playing Sheffield, um, Sheffield uh, uh, Wednesday. And the crowd was so hostile. And the hostility and the abuse that been shot in the stands, especially when the black boys <laughs> get onto the ball, it was just unbelievable. And you know what? I never ever went back to a football game because I said, this is, I was scared. I was in the stand and even the guys I went with, they were, you can see what was going on. But in, in, in cricket, I must admit, I have not uh, um, personally, um, you know, have abuse um, on the cricket field. Yeah, there is incident where I had to take on authorities, um, articles that been, uh, um, been printed, you know, uh, um, blanketing um, black players, or uh, um, just said, look, you possibly can't, um, you know, uh, um, give as much 
if you're black for England, which I said is absolutely rubbish, you understand? And from that point of view, I had to take institutions uh, um, or organization to court to put that right, you understand? And that wasn't just on from the cricket only point of view, because what I picked up from them was this, if you're black, you can't give as much or work as hard. And, you know, I did that for my kids. And, you know, my kids, none of them is in, in sports. They're all academics, you understand, pharmacists, you know, pediatricians, whatever. But it shows, look, it doesn't care where in society you are. You know, you can't have this stigma over your head, whether you're playing cricket or you're a doctor or whatever, if you're black or white, you, you have the heart to give as much or you're equally as intelligent to do, uh, um, to do well. So we can't use that to, uh, um, you know, legitimize things, so to speak. So people to, to, to cast abuse or to, you know, put you at a lower, uh, uh, a lower uh, um, rank because of your ethnicity or your color, to be honest. Absolutely. I guess just staying on cricket for a minute as well. Well, when football, this whole um, blackout, obviously the big focus is on football, but what more would you love to see the general English cricket community do to follow up this blackout going forward? Yes, I mean, obviously it's great to see we are on online with football right now, but yes, um, you know, we got to uh, um, press on even to the government really to say, look, we got to make this a law. You know, they got to um, hold these uh, um, big uh, um, social media companies, uh, um, you know, uh, to be accountable for what they do. And as for the PC or all the ECB, it's not just a one-off thing. You know, this got to be backed up with several different seminars, trying to educate people. And I don't know, I mean, you look on this as well, there's, you know, people try to hide you know, basically hide behind social media, posting things without being uh, accountable for it. And that can't happen. So from this first step, where the ECB take right now, the first step, I hope is a, a really giant step really, because it took decades and decades to get things where we are. But um, the racists or the people who want to show abuse at people, you know, um, uh, um, using this platform. And, and don't get me wrong, it's not only about race. There's a lot of people suffer from mental health problems. A lot of the youngsters coming up these days, that's where they communicate. You know, young people at school, whether they're black, whether they're white. I'm talking the wider, uh, um, the wider society now. They've got problems because, you know, um, your kids going to school, whatever, you still gotta be checking their site to make sure because they could be horribly abused behind there and hiding it. I mean, when I was growing up earlier on, we didn't have social media. So if you've got a bit of problem in the, in the playground, you sort it out there. The teacher will see it and they try and you know sort it out. Nowadays is you know they group up and it's behind the line. And all of a sudden you see youngsters having eating problems, they can't, they don't want to go to school, they and develop mental health problems. So uh, you know, from the sports point of view and from the government point of view, this is you know, this is as as I would say. Um, probably as serious as smoking, <laughs> you understand? Because it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's almost a pandemic behind the scene. But one thing I say is this, we got to these uh, um, social, multi-million pound social media companies. They got from TikTok, you know, you name it, Facebook, um, Twitter, whatever. They got to do something more, to be honest, to protect not only sports people, but the wider public, to be honest, because I mean, this is a big platform. This is how people communicate these days. So, um, you know, these guys, these companies, governments also, and these various sports and organizations, we're only a small vo voice in this, in the sense until there's legislation, government come to, you know, be stamped down hard on these people. We can do what we're gonna do, do what we're doing now, doing the black holes and show the social media sites that look, you know, they need us as much, you know, as we need them. And they just got to use their administrative um, platforms just to set things up properly. Absolutely. I guess lastly, obviously, um, yourself, Phil DeFreitas, Joey Benjamin, you guys play in an era where I guess more black players played for England. Right now, of course, Jaffa Archer, Chris Jordan, um, the two prominent black players in the England team right now. So I guess not to ask you if you're proud of them in any way, what would be your advice to them as current England stalwart black players of how they can move forward in this environment? Well, what I must say, um, uh, um, 
for these guys. And I hate keep going back in our time, in my time. But, you know, they, you got to compare and contrast, so to speak. Um, you know, uh, <laughs> I'm just talking a, 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 a short while ago about social media. I thought I said to you, it's been brilliant, you know, and also in the same sense, it can be very, very bad. But these guys have social media now, things happen and whatever, they can post things out there. But what I must say to you, positive things, what's happened, the good things, whatever, and call people out as well. They've got that platform to call people out and organizations out so the whole world, uh, um, so the whole world can see it. When we played, nothing like that, you understand? We didn't have anything like that. We probably just take things to individuals and they either just sweep it on the carpet or whatever. But we've got a clear platform and also players a lot more a team ethics kind of situation. They look out for each other. It's not like in the past, okay, it's not happening to me, so I ignore it. You know, these guys, they, uh, um, the ECB, the PCA, they have proper guidelines now, since especially since Black Lives Matter, um, to listen to us, so to speak, what's bothering and how can we improve things? So we try to create a clear pathway, so to speak, to report things. The, PC, the ECB, the PCA, who I keep mentioning, who's the, uh, um, the player's representative, so to speak, and make sure these things are there for uh, um, guys to tap into, you understand? As, as, as for the amount of black players playing for England at the moment, yeah, the, the ECB, so to speak, you know, um, kind of took their eyes off the ball. You know, as I said, you've got Jaffra, uh, um, Chris Jordan playing at the moment, and he's trying to encourage, trying to see a lot more black and Asian kids uh, or Asian players playing at uh, um, county cricket. So that's another area that the ECB seriously need to look at because cricket is, you know, <laughs> nowadays a very, very expensive uh, um, sport to play. You got to basically go to private schools, you've got to have all the facilities and all that business to play. But, um, you know, moving, looking forward, where there is a will, there is a way. And if the ECB really, really want to be country and to try and encourage a lot more um, black players to play in, there got to be some, uh, um, there can be some serious look on this and this can happen. Perfect, perfect.